気をつけレイThe class of assassin students have received the task to assassinate their teacher. The rules are simple. Take out Koro Sensei before the term is over, otherwise the world will be destroyed. We will look at the attempts of the students to beat their teacher, look at the mistakes they make and figure out what could have been done to win the fight faster and better to ultimately beat Koro Sensei in assassination classroom. Our government once again failed miserably and decided to push away their responsibility onto a class full of delinquents. The duty of each student is to attempt to assassinate him. Normal weapons don't work, only highly specialized weaponry crafted by masters that only use the best of materials will be able to harm Koro Sensei. Yes, I'm talking BB pellets and gummy knives. The rules are simple. Kill Koro Sensei in any way you can think of. Most of you know, this is easier said than done. And precisely because of that, we need Irina Yelovich. A professional hitman hired by the government to kill Koro Sensei. Now whatever you might have against live action adaptations, I f***ing love them. Okay, but how do we kill a horny, godspeed, inherent thing that notoriously dodged every attack attempted by anyone before? especially as mere high schoolers. Well, one of the biggest advantages we have is that he would never lay hands on his students. Another fact that we should seriously consider is that we are very close to him and gain his trust easily. If I were one of the students, I would do it exactly like Nagisa does. I would note down every little thing about Koro Sensei that catches my eye. This is the best way to go before you start bombing your attempts, which in return makes it more and more difficult each time. One person should stay in the back observing Koro Sensei's reactions closely. Perhaps even try and capture everything with a high speed camera. Meanwhile, the others of the class should do their deed and try out a variety of different attacks. I think it should be clear that shooting bullet balls directly at him has virtually no effect because of his speed. Therefore, it would make sense to try out different tactics. How does he react to liquids, differences in temperature? What about any other element? How does he respond to physical exhaustion, verbal abuse and any other attempts to slow down his psychological and physiological capabilities? It is safe to say that there are countless options to try out. I would spreadsheet the shit out of those. One week, five experiments, one day at a time, with full dedication and enthusiasm just like Rock Lee had for his training. With this strategy, there is no way you will not find something quickly. If it turns out that all of your approaches spared no fruits, then it would become increasingly obvious that he has no weaknesses to begin with. But we all know he has them. <laughs> you people are a circus. Our students come up with the idea to lure Koro Sensei into a trap using adult magazines. I don't know who thought of this idea, but give that man a medal. This dude understands that in order to prevail in life, you must think outside the box. The problem is, once he is trapped, our students return to being dull idiots and try to shoot him down with BB projectiles. Again. I don't get that. If you shot a trillion bullets at something without success for multiple days straight, why would you even bother? How did this quote go again? Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again while expecting different results. Yeah. The smarter way would have been to prepare the net with sharp objects made with the material that can actually harm him. In a later scene, we see Akabane Karma has stuck shards like these onto his hand, shook Koro Sensei's arm and actually achieved harming him. The point here is, the only weakness that we so far have figured out is the obscene portrayal of the opposite sex. Therefore, I am making the following proposition. In order to successfully take him out, we need Irina Yelovich bear herself for the sake of humanity. There is no chance Koro Sensei could withstand the temptation and fully lose control even for just a second, which means we could finally blast the bullet ball right through his big, round, smiley head and save humanity once again through the combined efforts of men and women. If there are any people opposing this strategy, fight me. Do you remember the bully of your school? Well, he was nothing compared to the bullies in class 3E. 
Those people will strap homemade bombs around your torso and send you off without even promising you a thousand virgins. That's some cold ass shit. Who has the audacity to do a cruel act like this without even attempting to comfort the victim with at least one virgin? Exactly. Nobody. Anyway, Nagisa goes off pretending he has finished the paper while hiding a knife behind it. Koro-sensei actually takes the bait and overlooks the bomb strapped onto Nagisa. That was a pretty smart move, not gonna lie. But that too could have been much more efficient if the students thought it through and perhaps had a second plan on top of it, instead of just one single blow. But I guess you don't become a bully when you are sufficiently intelligent anyway. You see, Koro-sensei generally trusts his students. Therefore, if you can manage to build a bomb filled with anti-teacher pellets combined with a long-range activation device, then I would recommend you build as many bombs as you can and hide them inside classroom furniture. If you can't decide on any good hideouts, I would suggest you go check out Sankyo no Terror. Since the classroom of class 3E is in an old, shabby and very insecure building, it would be very easy to get in there when no class is being held. Personally, I would prepare cluster bombs filled with anti-teacher ammunition that would cover a wide area upon detonation. Koro-sensei is fast, but he cannot teleport. Keep in mind that any failed attempt to murder your teacher is that he develops heightened awareness every time thereafter. Meaning if you have tried to take him out with a hidden bomb but failed, it's pretty safe to assume that this option is now gone too. The government came up with another possibly stupid idea to get the job done. This, ladies and gentlemen, is why life action adaptations are f***ing weird, but at the same time so surreal that it's actually fun to watch, even though you constantly bend your head, lower your eyebrows and think, what the fuck? <laughs> now mind you, this teenage AI girl has four Gatling guns blasting at Koro-sensei, basically another futile attempt to assassinate him. But this scene made me wonder, how fast do those projectiles actually fly? Turns out that most projectiles travel about 1 mile per second, which is pretty fast, but nowhere near Koro-sensei's hypervelocity. However, some crazy scientists back in the 90s at the Sandian National Laboratories have developed a magnetic field that shoots pellets at 10 miles per second. Yeah, that's, that's freaking insane, I know. That's almost twice as fast as Koro-sensei's top speed. The only downside of that quote-unquote fastest gun in the world is it's 60 feet long, which is about 18 meters, so, so screw that. But our government has yet another plan other than teenage gunslinger girls blasting bullets at Koro-sensei. Let me introduce you to Itona, supposedly Koro-sensei's brother. Now I don't know about y'all, but he looks like a non-binary Metal Gear Solid 4 boss. Don't be deceived by this kid's size, he has pretty big balls. He challenges Koro-sensei to a duel. He actually had a real chance to win this fight, but his cockiness wasn't any support. He could've won if he took it more seriously. Okay, so by now we have found countless ways on how to efficiently fight Koro-sensei and perhaps finally finish the job. His weakness for voluptuous female bodies combined with the wide available selection of Japanese JAV merchandise is the perfect combination to strike Merciless with the power of a sexy attack. Here goes my plan. We divide the class into four groups. The first group consisting of males, tomboys and any other life form sexually attracted to women goes for a shopping spree through Kabukicho. The goal is to make kinky shop owners rich and collect a wide range of profound and culturally important things like posters, magazines, pictures, takimakuras, voiceovers, videotapes, general merchandise and anything else that you might be able to get your hands on that could beat Koro-sensei. Mind you, this is solely intended for professional use and will be eligible for tax refund. The second group stays behind and prepares the room in a way that Koro-sensei cannot escape once our surprise hits. Here's how to do that. Cut anti-teacher fabric in large measurements and hide them inside the walls, under the floor and inside the ceiling. If you don't have the possibility to hide them inside, make use of a double wall, wallpaper or anything else that is time efficient and of good enough quality. It is very important to dispose of any signs that such preparations have been made, so please double check. 
The third group will be the scouts hiding in bushes and trees around the building, trying to spot any suspicious activity that could prevent our plan from succeeding. They get a pair of binoculars, walkie-talkie and seaweed snakes. The fourth and arguably most important group will be our special forces. They will only be activated when all is lost and we are in need of drastic action. Our highly skilled, naturally talented special forces are the hotties of the class. They will hide in designated areas and storm out naked when the sign is being given. Listen, I know that might be not the most desirable outcome for some, but the main weakness of Koro Sensei is obvious and the prevention of Armageddon more important than individual dignity. Once the preparation has been completed, the anti-teacher adult merge will then be hidden throughout the classroom, behind the blackboard, under the tables, inside helium-filled balloons and, in form of posters, rolled up on the walls that can be pulled down simultaneously with just one swish. Through all the beautiful merch hanging from the walls, Koro Sensei's brain will overreact and a huge overflow of dopamine will be triggered, resulting in a severe loss of focus. This, in combination with the anti-teacher fabric inside the walls, will keep him sufficiently trapped. If he somehow miraculously keeps his cool, our hot special forces will join the party, at which point it's over. In my humble opinion, this will suffice in taking him down, because he doesn't stand a chance to notice the student with the best aim taking a shot at him. If you have a goal, it is important to have multiple strategies in mind to reach it. If you just focus on one way and you miss it, you will have to start all over from scratch. But if you hone multiple strategies at the same time, you ensure backup if things won't go straight from beginning. Even though you might lose efficiency at first, in the long term, it will pay out. Koro Sensei might be the target of each student to kill, but he also is their teacher. He encourages them not just to be more creative in their attempts to beat him, but also become better people. Koro Sensei is really a great example of what it means to be a good teacher. Sometimes bluntness and force are necessary, but more often than not, encouragement and belief are the values that make the real difference. The downside of having such a good teacher is the emotional attachment we naturally build. To assassinate someone is probably easier when you are emotionally detached and reserved. But if your target and you go sip mocktails after class and have fancy sleepovers every now and then, all the while plotting his assassination, I don't think that will make it easier. Therefore, one of the most important aspects our students seem to miss is a strong bond they are developing, which they probably shouldn't if they are serious about killing him. Our students enjoy the fireworks and celebrate the summer. They are taking a break from their attempts to beat Koro Sensei. I think taking a break every now and then is a very important thing and should be part of every strategy. Going at something at full speed over and over again won't help unless you are an idiot or one of these dudes. Never. Take a break, enjoy yourself and take it easy for a few days. This not only lets you recalibrate and find new strength, but it also lets you come up with new strategies and ideas on how to finish the task you have signed up for. The students of class 3E have had countless strategies that didn't work out well. Either they were futile in attempt or just not very well thought through. Let's check out the advantages our students could derive from this quick but important break. Looks like they got some motivation, huh? See what a break can do? Don't forget your Snickers if you're already at it. In the next part of the movie, Koro Sensei has lost a bet and agreed to having some of his tentacles be temporarily removed, which results in a significant decrease of his speed. But it seems like our students did not just wait for this moment to come, no. They actually put some thought and effort in as well, which is a refreshing surprise. They built a giant homemade fortress that looks like a castle of one of my childhood dreams, which is pretty impressive. They have built it in a way that it's practically completely anti Koro Sensei. I am glad that this was made in 2015, otherwise we would have class 3E being cancelled because of an anime character discrimination. Yoku so 
They almost ended up killing Korra Sensei, which resulted in a huge explosion that destroyed basically the whole construction. Korra Sensei survived and took refuge in a pretty epic transparent crystal sphere that I would instantly buy if I could. He explains that this is his ultimate defense and that not even a nuclear bomb could leave a scratch on it. The students probably thought, am I a joke to you, bro? At the same time, a bunch of bad people arrive while some of the students collapse. Apparently, they got poisoned by one of these evil dudes magically from afar. If you don't know who they are, I am sorry. I skipped that part of the movie because I didn't know it will become important. However, the non-binary Metal Gear Solid Boy makes a comeback and starts chasing down Nagisa and Karma. Our two characters escape and climb up a distribution tower, but let's be honest here for a second, they have zero chance against that little kid strengthwise, and Koro Sensei is neutralized for the time being. That means the only chance they would have would be to outsmart that little kid. Since he and Koro Sensei have the same type of body, they also have the same kind of weakness. This is the time to pull out your notes and come up with a plan. At first, I thought climbing up this tower is probably the dumbest idea one could possibly come up with. But they proved me wrong. When they reach the top and almost get killed by the final boss, it starts to rain. Being on top of this tower makes it impossible to escape, and since rain is one of the most prominent weaknesses of those entities, the fight is pretty much won by our heroes. In the end, Nagisa hugs the kid, gently cuts off his tentacles, and whispers softly that he can join their class in the next term. Amazing. Apparently love is all you need. Nagisa and Karma storm back to the school where the other dude is still being a big asshole. Turns out he wants to kill Koro Sensei so he can earn the props. He pressures our students into handing over Koro Sensei in return of the antidotes to save their poisoned classmates. However, Nagisa tricks him with fake humility and well, his face was priceless. <laughs> Everyone is having a blast, Irina still looking hot as f**k and Koro Sensei is safe and sound. Until eventually the Ministry of Defense joins the party and takes Koro Sensei into custody. Everyone gets flown into a secret military base where they are allowed to witness Koro Sensei's last moments. He gets covered with anti-teacher substance which in theory prevents him from escaping. At last, a huge bomb goes off, taking his life finally. Everyone is cheering apart from our students, which is understandable. Tears flow until our beloved Koro Sensei, of course, makes the weirdest comeback possible and everything goes back to all beautiful and sweet again like it used to be. The next term is about to start and we can't wait to see the students go all again.